Hi there, welcome back to another Stillwaters ASMR video and today we are doing another daily reading video from the Bible course from the Bible Society. Um, I'd like to start with a couple um, points to mention before I get stuck into the video. One is I would like to apologise in advance for the state of my fingernails um, and the dirt underneath them. I would like to clarify it isn't just that I'm dirty and haven't washed. I um, I was doing some motorcycle maintenance recently and I was wearing gloves but the gloves ripped and I got chain grease underneath my fingernails which is proving a nightmare to shift. Um, but they have been washed and there is a clean dirt now. So apologies if that's distracting at all. It's the hazards of doing your own um, vehicle maintenance. Um, but this girl can, so you know, it's a perk. Um, the other point is, it's really hot so I have the window open. So apologies for outside noises. It's the middle of the day and there's people coming and going and vehicles and but we're in the middle of a heat wave here in England and there's no way I'm shutting my windows. Um, it's been stifling hot for the last um, week or so really and today's the first day we've had like a cool breeze going through and it's wonderful. We're not made for the heat over here. Um, and the second point is I've got my oh, third can't count. I've got my laptop running over to the side of me. Um, it's rendering a video I finally edited that was recorded back in February. Um, and so you might hear laptop whirry noises, but um, apologies for that if you do. So hopefully there's not too much background noise in this video. If there is, I apologise. Um, so yeah, getting started with our reading. As before, I'll be reading from the King James Version, the NIV and the Message. And today's reading is day 6 of week 1 and it's Genesis chapter 37 verses 1 through 36. Joseph, the coat and the dreams. Down to Egypt. So starting in the King James Version. Starting in Genesis 37. So, Joseph's dreams. And Jacob dwelt in a land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being seventeen years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colours. When his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood around about, and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed rule or reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it to his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren, 
And his father rebuked him, and said unto him, Who, what is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the saying. And his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Seshem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Seshem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here am I. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren, and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Seshem. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. The man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They are departed hence, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit, and we will say some evil beast hath devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands, and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands, to deliver him to his father again. And it came to pass, when Joseph was come up unto his brethren, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colours that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty, there was no water in it. They sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels, bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brethren were content. Then there passed by Midianites, merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit, and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt, and Reuben returned unto the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes. And he returned unto his brethren, and said, The child is not, and I wither, and I, whither shall I go? And they took Joseph's coat, and killed a kid of the goats, and dipped the coat in the blood. Then they sent the coat of many colours, and they brought it to their father, and said, This have we found, N know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. And he knew it, and said, It is my son's coat, an evil beast hath devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. And Jacob rent his clothes, and put sackcloth upon his loins, and mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him. But he refused to be comforted, and he said, For I will go down into the grave unto my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him. And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's, and captain of the guard. Stop, we've got the NIV. So here we go. 
Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob. Joseph, a young man of seventeen, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bila, and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, and he brought their father a bad report about them. I apologise, there's a helicopter going overhead. Or maybe an airplane. So noisy air flying machine. Okay. It's almost gone by. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons, because he had been born to him in his old age, and he made a richly ornamented robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, Listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of corn out in the field, when suddenly my sheaf arose and stood upright, while your sheaves gathered round mine and bowed down to it. His brother said to him, Do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Then he had another dream, and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream, and this time the sun and moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. Now his brothers had gone to graze their, flo their father's flocks near Session, and Israel said to Joseph, As you know, your brothers are grazing the flocks near Session. Come, I am going to send you to them. Very well, he replied. So he said to him, Go and see if all is well with your brothers and with the flocks, and bring word back to me. Then he sent him off from the valley of Hebron. When Joseph arrived at Session, a man found him wandering around in the fields and asked him, What are you looking for? He replied, I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are grazing their flocks? They have moved on from here, the man answered. I heard them say, let's go to Do Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan. But they saw him in a distance, and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into the cistern here in the desert, but don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said this to rescue him from them and take him back to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the richly ornamented robe he was wearing, and they took him and threw him into the cistern. And the cistern was empty, there was no water in it. As they sat down to eat their meal, they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their camels were loaded with spices, balm and myrrh, and they were on their way to take them down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, What will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let's sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him. After all, he is our brother our own flesh and blood. His brothers agreed. So when the Midianite merchants came by, his brothers pulled Joseph up out of the cistern and sold him for twenty shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites who took him to Egypt. When Reuben returned to the cistern and saw that Joseph was not there, he tore his clothes. He went back to his brothers and said, The boy isn't there. Where can I turn now? Then they got Joseph's robe, slaughtered a goat, and dipped the robe in the blood. 
they took the ornamented robe back to their father and said, We found this. Examine it to see whether it's your son's robe. He recognised it and said, It is my son's robe. Some ferocious animal has devoured him. Joseph has surely been torn to pieces. Then Jacob, Jacob tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and mourned for his son many days. All his sons and daughters came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. No, he said, in mourning will I go down to the grave to my son. So his father wept for him. Meanwhile, the Midianites sold Joseph in Egypt to Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard. Now for the final reading from the message version. So here we go. Meanwhile, Jacob had settled down where his father had lived, the land of Canaan. This is the story of Jacob. The story continues with Joseph, 17 years old at the time, helping out his brothers in herding the flocks. These were his half-brothers, actually, the sons of his father's wives, Bilhah and Zilpah. And Joseph brought his father bad reports on them. Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons, because he was a child of his old age, and he made him an elaborate embroidered coat. When his brothers realised that their father loved him more than them, they grew to hate him and wouldn't even speak to him. Joseph had a dream. When he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said, listen to this dream I had. We were all out in the field gathering bundles of wheat. All of a sudden, my bundle stood straight up, and your bundle circled around it and bowed down to mine. His brother said, so, you're going to rule us, you're going to boss us around. And they hated him more than ever, because of his dreams and the way he talked. He had another dream, and told this one also to his brothers. I dreamed another dream. The sun, the moon, and eleven stars bowed down to me. When he told it to his father and brothers, his father reprimanded him. What's with all this dreaming? Am I and your mother and your brothers all supposed to bow down to you? Now his brothers were really jealous, but his father brooded over the whole business. His brothers had gone off to Seshem, where they were pasturing their father's flocks. Israel said to Joseph, Your brothers are with flocks in Seshem. Come, I want to send you to them. Joseph said, I am ready. He said, go and see how your brothers and the flocks are doing, and bring me back a report. He sent him off from the valley of Hebron to Seshem. A man, a man met him as he was wandering through the fields, and asked him, what are you looking for? I'm trying to find my brothers. Do you have any idea where they are grazing their flocks? The man said, They've left here, but I overheard them say, let's go to Dotham. So Joseph took off, tracking his brothers down, and found them in Dotham. They spotted him off in the distance. By the time he got to them, they had cooked up a plot to kill him. The brothers were saying, here comes that dreamer. Let's kill him and throw him into one of these old cisterns. Second, I'm just gonna mute my laptop because it's making noises. Here comes that dreamer. Let's kill him and throw him into one of these old cisterns. We can say that a vicious animal ate him up. We'll see what his dreams amount to. Reuben heard his brothers talking and intervened to save him. We're not going to kill him, no murder. Go ahead and throw him into the cistern out here in the wild, but don't hurt him. Reuben planned to go back later and get him out and take him back to his father. When Joseph reached his brothers, they ripped off the fancy coat he was wearing, grabbed him and threw him into a cistern. The cistern was dry, there wasn't any water in it. 
Then they sat down to eat their supper. Looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites on their way from Gilead, their camels loaded with spices, ointments and perfumes to sell in Egypt. Judah said, Brothers, what are we going to get out of killing our brother and concealing the evidence? Let's sell him to the Ishmaelites, but let's not kill him. He is, after all, our brother, our own flesh and blood. His brothers agreed. By that time, the Midianite traders were passing by. His brothers pulled Joseph out of the cistern and sold him for twenty pieces of silver to the Ishmaelites, who took Joseph with them down to Egypt. Later, Reuben came back and went to the cistern. No Joseph. He ripped his clothes in despair. Beside himself, he went to his brothers. The boy's gone. What am I going to do? They took Joseph's coat, butchered a goat, and dipped the coat in the blood. They took the fancy coat back to their father and said, We found this. Look it over. Do you think this is your son's coat? He recognised it at once. My son's coat, a wild animal, has eaten him. Joseph torn limb from limb. Jacob tore his crook, his clothes in grief, dressed in rough burlap, and mourned his son a long, long time. His sons and daughters tried to comfort him, but he refused their comfort. I'll go to the grave mourning my son. Oh, how his father wept for him. In Egypt, the Midianites sold Joseph to Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's officials, manager of his household affairs. So that is the week one daily readings complete of the Bible course. I'm going to continue working through this book with these readings um, but I might do a different um, reading next week I've not decided yet just to add a bit of variety um, but yeah it's it's so far it's been a really interesting course and I'm looking forward to seeing what the next few weeks worth of readings have in store so that's it for now and I'll see you in another video soon